Audible offers an incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre. As an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep from their entire catalog, including the latest bestsellers and new releases. Audible is the destination for thrilling audio entertainment with next listen recommendations to habituate every type of thriller listener. The time is now more than ever to embrace the breathtaking, sinister, and shocking tales that have enthralled you, especially with brand new exclusive thrillers from best-selling authors who are guaranteed to keep you gripped. So, Ronnie, I recently downloaded Squeeze Me by Carl Hyacin, mainly because it shows a martini glass with a snake tail wrapped around it. I mean, what else needs to be said? And I am very excited to listen to it later today. New members can try Audible free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash crappens or text crappens to 500-500. That's audible.com slash crappens or text crappens to 500-500. Do you struggle trying to reach those corner lashes when applying mascara? L'Oreal Paris' new Panorama Mascara catches every lash for corner-to-corner volume. Your sister uh, has been using this, right? She loves it, yes. They sent me some, and I gave it to my sister and my nieces. And actually, I looked at, uh, I saw my niece the other day and was like, your eyelashes, is that the new mascara? She's like, yes, look at them. (laughs) They were like fanned out. I mean, this is a great product. You can buy Panorama Mascara on Amazon today. Want to see life in Panorama with fully fanned out lashes? Now you can with L'Oreal Paris Panorama Mascara that creates corner-to-corner panoramic lash volume. This podcast is supported by FedEx. FedEx offers fast delivery, more visibility, simple returns, and weekend home delivery to 98% of the U.S. population on Saturday and 50% on Sunday. With FedEx, you get picture-proof of delivery, ensuring you always know where your package is. Returns are simple with packageless and paperless returns. Plus, FedEx Ground is also faster to more locations than UPS Ground. See the FedEx service guide for delivery information. So, what are you waiting for? See what FedEx can do for your business. Absolutely, positively, FedEx. Hi everyone, welcome back. This is part two of a two-part recap. If you're wondering where part one was, well go check in the feed and be sure to subscribe. So then we then we cut to Tori and Katie's hot, hot date. They're making small paintings in her apartment. <laughs> Oh, exactly I thought they were expect. at a painting plate. I thought they were at one of those, like, you should come here and, like, paint stuff. You know, it's like well, Build-A-Bear, like an art place. I didn't realize that was Katie's house. I assumed it was her house, because guess what? Her place does kind of look like a Build-A-Bear art suit. Like, she does look like she lives in a Color Me Mine. Um, I'm sure it was discussed on the after show, so my bad. build a, <laughs> build a... <laughs> Or a bear. <laughs> uh, so... um yeah they're making these paintings and katie's like this is my painting and tori's like oh my god that is so good auntie i mean katie that is so good (laughs) i walked into my sister's room the other day and she was just watching pop ross videos and i was like oh bob ross was alive when they had video cameras i like literally knew nothing about bob ross isn't that hilarious go throw yourself in the la river tori see you never um katie just looks at her like i can't believe i'm faking this for a fucking storyline <laughs> fuck this girl i love that katie can't even hide it she's just like <sighs> she's like can someone get me like weird al Shamley again because this is really killing my soul i think if katie is going to experiment she needs to go she needs to be with like a like a jenna type from real housewives of new york an older yeah confident woman who knows what she wants she doesn't mess need to mess around with a like a young fuckwit you know what she i mean she needs to be with like kelly a, a real woman she needs to be with someone not that tori's not a real woman you know what i mean like a mature right. woman. i'm sorry ben go ahead no she needs to be with someone like kelly catrone who's just like yells at people and then in her off time haunts a house you know <laughs> yes <laughs> 
there needs to be a spook factor. And that's why I think it's funny that Katie, like her online, like bullying or whatever she does with Joe, where she's like, she's spooky. And now everyone online's like, spooky Joe, spooky Joe. Um, I think that's like the funniest thing to call Joe because I think Katie would do really well with a spooky person. Like Katie is she, she is like such a Wednesday spooky. Adams. And by the I way, I was about to say that she's I talk Wednesday. all kinds of mad shit on this show, but you know I love me some Wednesday Adams. That was like my favorite show of the year last year. And I think Katie should just like totally fully give into that vibe and just be a Wednesday and be with like a little yeah. Just, just flop over into the Tim Burton universe because that's where she belongs. Put her in a Beetlejuice. Hell on a on Wednesday. A She's around. Yeah, go this find is, come her. on now, Katie. Go, yeah. go, like, be a neighbor who disapproves of Edward Scissorhands, or like be like, just like be in the Batcave and be mad at Bruce Wayne or something. I don't know. Like, I just yeah. feel like she's so she's she's definitely this is why she's miserable because she's a tim burton character stuck in the world of bravo she's just miserable because she's miserable and that's her personality and she doesn't have to just be miserable that's fun i mean i'm fairly miserable i enjoy my life it's how i enjoy my life you know what i mean just find someone you can do it with and not feel bad about being miserable like this tory girl is not going to cut it katie will emotionally abuse the fuck out of this girl two hours into the relationship like i'm surprised if tory didn't leave crying <laughs> So, there's no, this is not this is not the vibe you know yeah there's no way that katie is going to be able to tolerate like one more conversation with this empty marshmallow of a human yeah so Tom, and also tori her. with the eyebrows okay i get that there are certain things as an old person that i'm just not going to understand in the world and i get it this is like old queen standing on the lawn shaking his fist at the sky i get it but these eyebrows where you're combing your eye you're brushing your eyebrows with gel like into the center of your face it's the equivalent of the stupid boy teenage boy hair where they push all their hair forward stop doing this with your eyebrows you guys look crazy you look like you've slept on your faces mm. with snot all over your eyebrows and you you look like something about mary cumbangs but on your eyebrows please stop it <laughs> okay i get we want things that are new find better things these eyebrows are not it I'm telling not you. it so now um we go back to tom at hair boss extensions and he's like it's not like, hair temp it's not hair employees not hair applicant it's hair boss bitch <laughs> just a bitch at work <laughs> Oh, I think Tori prefers Katie than me. Oh, but you know what though? I'm gonna go to the Mondrian tonight. For a singles mixer. Best little boy. I wanna and go. Joseph, <laughs> I wanna go. I wanna go to singles uh, mixer. Okay. Uh you can come, I guess. Oh uh, I if you don't get this. any mixed signals. <laughs> <laughs> you mix, mix singles. You're getting mixed singles? Is that what you're getting? Mixed singles? No. <laughs> Wait, is this only for mixed singles? Am I mixed enough? I'm uh, part hairdresser and part boss. Is that mixing up for you? <laughs> I, I hope I don't give you mixed signals. I hope you come, but I want you to come with me because, you know, we do so well together. We're just great. It's almost like I don't need anyone else. So I can't wait for you with me for me to find someone else. Oh no, I hope I'm not giving mixed signals. <laughs> He's so ridiculous. <laughs> he did exactly what we thought he was going to do in this episode, but we thought it was going to take a season. But nope, he just shorted it right up, right in the. <laughs> Right in this poor girl's like third episode. I mean, what an ass. <laughs> so, so she's like, she... well, I can tell you this much for your your mixed singles. Hmm. They're going to be like, oh, my God, is that guy mixed with hotness? Yes, you're going to look at me. You're going to be half pasty and half amazing. Are you ready <gasps> to see? But my hair looks brown hair. again. My hair looks brown again. Something went wrong. It's like, <sighs> Joe's like, I hate people who don't do hair. You're listen. You are the hair employee right now. And I am the hair boss. Hashtag extensions. OK, don't worry. You're in good crazy hands. <laughs> now, do you mind that I use mustard as a dye? <laughs> you look like Eminem. <laughs> so now it's nighttime. And now we see Katie and Ariana and Sheena and Lala walking slow mo down the sidewalk. Like the talk about some boss bitches. They're like, yeah, we own the night. And I looked up, they went to a place called, um, it was a bar. I forgot what the bar was called, but I looked it up. And I saw that it was on Magnolia Boulevard in the valley. And there was just like something very funny to me of them walking down the street as if they were like going down Rodeo or Sunset Boulevard, like one of these storied, famous LA, you know, high profile boulevards. It's like, no, they're just going down Magnolia Boulevard in, in, in Burbank. <laughs> like, -na 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 -na. It's a hot dog. 
It's a giant. <laughs> da, na, 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 na. We just walked by Joanne Fabrics. Da, na, 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 na. <laughs> um, oh my God, Arby's is still open. Da, na, na, na. <laughs> Calling me mine. Hey, Kitty, weren't you just there today? Da, na, 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 na. That's one thing I just remember thinking multiple times in the valley over the years. I I feel like I always have the thought, they're still in Arby's. <laughs> <laughs> so I go to this bar. I will say this. Okay, I, obviously I talk a lot of shit about the valley because I'm a dick, but I love the bars in the valley. They have the best old school bars there where everything is like red leather. Uh, uh banquettes and there's like popcorn machines they are so fun i love all those bars they go to one of those for girls night and ariana's like oh by the way katie how was your day and lots of wait seconds i didn't know you went on a date with tori just you know what's weird is that like the night before she went on a date with your husband did you know that's like god it can't be any weirder than begging his best friend <laughs> And Katie's like, um, tequila Katie's a hoe. <sighs> I mean, he can have Joe. It's not like there's any competition there. And she was like, <laughs> <laughs> Sheena's so, Sheena's so Sheena squared in this episode, by the way. Everything that comes out of her mouth. So then we go to Sky Bar and Schwartz and Joe. Sky Bar is where I first saw Brock in real life. And I will not get it. I was like, Skybar? Oh, Skybar is like a big player on this show. I feel like it doesn't get the credit, but like so many things happen at Skybar on Better Pump Rules over the years. Like we've so literally watched so many people age at Skybar on this show. Yeah. It's amazing. It's like watching those videos um, of like a flower rising up from the ground and then blooming and then getting old and shriveling and dying all in like five seconds. That's what I feel like the Skybar is to this show. That is. That is the sky bar. Do you know one time I went to the sky bar? Like the sky bar has been around a long time. And I remember like 2004 or five going to the sky bar, getting wasted with my friend Stephanie. And then there was like this restaurant at the time called Asia to Cuba that was like attached to sky bar. And there was like this big group of like 18 people having this big group dinner. And we got drunk and we wound up like going over to this group and we sat down with them. Oh, I remember this. And we like, like we were part thing. of it and we talked with them and it was amazing. And they were like, have some food. We're eating the food. It was so good. And then at the end of the night, I was <laughs> the waiter came over and was like, Do you want to pack this up? I was like, Yeah, you can pack it up. <laughs> so I took all their food. They're I, I packed up all their food and I was like, I just got free fancy food. And the next day I like I was like, and now I have that Asia to Cuba food to have for dinner. I opened it up and I was like, this is all food that's been half eaten by strangers. <laughs> I was like, this is what, this is the worst. I just threw it all out. I was like, what was I thinking? And you know that you're one of their stories too. Cause they're like, do you remember that time we went to Asia to Cuba and that weird <laughs> fucking guy came and took all of our food home? What a weird. <laughs> And you know, I probably like it was not the last stop of the night. You know, I was probably like walking to like different bars, the giant Asia to Cuba taking it back the entire time. <laughs> Something here reached to Cuba. <laughs> uh, okay, so Schwartz and Joe arrive, and Schwartz is like, Oh, I've got a hat. I should take it off. No, 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 I don't want to take it off. Wait, maybe I should take it off. I'm feeling some energy right now. Uh, you know what they say, blondes have more fun. And so far, it's ringing true for me. <laughs> Sandoval's like, Whoa. I thought your hair was just like really short on the side, but it's bleach blonde. Whoa, man. You know, Sandoval was jealous because Sandoval is the one who likes being the one who's extra. So the fact that sh like Schwartz suddenly did this random unapproved extra thing, I guarantee Sandoval was furious. So Sandoval, speaking of, is there with Craig, his new assistant. Well, <laughs> yeah. geez, man, he really, he's really anti Anne, eh? God, you just yeah. can't interview for a new job while your boss is upstairs. I mean, for Christ's sake, what kind of world do we live in? Right? So Schwartz says that he went on a date with, like, Tori, and Joe's like, oh, she's where? She doesn't even need buildings. And Sandoval's like, dude, like, Schwartz and Joe are, like, on two different pages. Like, Joe is looking at their situationship as, like, a glass half-full relationship. And Schwartz is just, like, being Schwartz. And it's, like, going off of, like, mixed signals. Like, that's part of his superpower. He's just, like, so charming all the time. Like, this reminds me of, like, me and Ariana. Like, when Ariana and I, like, Ariana thought, like, we were in a relationship. And I was like, no, I'm fucking Raquel. Like, it's just, people get on the wrong page sometimes. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> Nothing bad happened. Only good things happened. Guess where they happened? 
Mm. Iraq, what a good guess. <laughs> Not that you said that out loud, but you should have said it out loud because I really want to know. Nothing good happened there. I'll tell you where it happened. On your head. That's where good things are happening. Guess why? Because I'm in charge. <laughs> I'm a boss. <laughs> I'm a boss of heads. Head boss, you're looking so good. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me fix your bangs. Let me fix your bangs. It's my work. Shut up. No one said anything, but I think they're thinking about it. It's so insecure doing my art in the sky bar. And then Kyle Chan is sitting there and he's like, that's not going to get many girls. I was like, excuse me. You don't go fuck off, Kyle Chan. You're not helping anyone's case either. Get out <laughs> of here. Kyle Chan does help because Kyle Chan can just be there like, I'm his friends who owns a diamond shop. Kyle is trying to be a bro, and he's like, hey, just bro night out. <sighs> That's not going to get him any girls, stupid. <laughs> hey, girl singles, want to, like, flirt with a boy right now? <laughs> yeah. So we cut back to girls night, and Lala's like, I had lunch at a hot dog stand with Joss yesterday. <laughs> and Katie's like, um... <sighs> Babe, what? What did she just say? How did this happen? She's like, well, she apparently just wanted to share her side of things with me. No, I was asking more like a hot dog stand. Really? <laughs> can't you do anything better than that, Lala? She's like, no, unfortunately, I can't. Why would you go to a restaurant that's so symbolic of your relationship with Rand? <laughs> well, apparently production used up their entire budget on that fucking paintball scene. So they just said you can go to a hot dog stand and who might have to turn down free foods. And Katie's like, you don't even know this girl. You have no relationship with this girl. Well, this girl's nothing to you. And I am something to you. So why are you feeling bad for this rando? What the fuck? I was like, I just went and had a conversation. You're acting like I just invited her to come swimming with my child. Okay, so, but why? 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 And so Lala's like, because she reached out to me and said, I would like to have a conversation with you. So basically, here's what's going on. Joe's been cast on the show as an official cast member. And Katie's like, no. Yeah. You can't hang out with Joe. And people are like, no, we're going to hang out. And it's kind of like the Tom Sandoval thing. Like... Okay, well, that's a cast member. And they're like, no, you can't hang out with them. They're like, oh, but we're gonna, because that's the show. So it's an interesting, it's interesting. And it's also interesting that production is just like, fuck it, let's just cast, <laughs> let's just bring in Randy. But I, just for, I, bring in the hairdresser Schwartz was banging. <laughs> but I think they brought her on because I think they realized, like, actually, Joe is like kind of appealing i think as a character on the show she's different than the others she is sort of goofy she seems like really sweet and she does have this kind of like earnest crush on schwartz that's i find to be endearing to watch and so i think that she's like a good addition to this show and but for katie it's like no like no i'm not gonna let this person who's like sleeping with schwartz just suddenly to get to be on this tv show absolutely not but it's also an example of a trap. You know, we talk about manifesting on the show because Ali's on it. But it's also manifesting the things that you don't want in your life because you're thinking about them so much. And that's totally what happened here because Katie is the one who really brought Joe on the show. No one else brought Joe up. Katie was the one who's like, oh, Joe. Well, I mean, I guess Tom talked about her as his roommate last year a little bit, but we didn't really see her. But Katie brought her up by being like, oh, fuck this girl. And then and then spooky Joe, crackhead Joe. She's posting about her on Twitter. She's bringing her up at the reunion. In. so in a way you're kind of manifesting what you're getting now which is kind of funny yeah and lala's basically tells us like you know what like she's harmless i don't think she's trying to roll up and be like yeah i'm here to fuck your man i'm just like you know you know lala's like you know when i say that like vaginas don't fall on dicks remember when i said that famously remember remember no okay well anyway i do that's something i say but i actually think that like when joe with joan shorts vaginas may actually just fall on dicks <laughs> She says, I usually say vaginas don't fall on dicks, but I think in this case, vaginas fall on dicks. <laughs> <laughs> so then Lala's like, you know what? Schwartz gave me her name to reach out to because like I'm soft. I mean, like soft. She's like, and Katie's like, why? She's like, because I'm soft right now, Katie. I'm soft. My brand is soft. This season I'm soft. Okay. I'm like Sears. Softer sides of Sears is but Lala's version. So like if you as a girl and look like, who's his friend like that I've met and I see her, like let's see my other friends call her a crackheads, which is what you did. You know, I'm soft. Oh, really? Right now. So soft. I see what you're doing. So I'm the bad one now. So like I'm Schwartz, soft. whatever, but I'm, I'm bad. Soft. I'm soft. 
So Lala's like, you know, you're not the bad ones. You're just treating me like I'm the bad ones, Kiersks. Oh, yeah. So wait, one minute Schwartz is the worst, and but now I'm bad? That's not making a lot of sense, Lala. You know what? I don't care, Sks. Okay, it's not my job for my life to make sense to you, Sks. Yeah, well, you know what? I like people who are consistent. She does yeah, a well, brow I... raise <laughs> thing where she's like, yeah, you're getting it right now. Um, I think she's been pretty fucking consistent for you, Katie. Huh? Hold on. Wow, I, I had to like actually look at the video to see if I can still raise my eyebrow. I really can't. In it. my mind, my eyebrow is like all the way up here, but in real life, it like raised like half an inch. I have to say, good job, Botox people, because that's crazy. Okay, mm -hmm. sorry, Ben. Go ahead. Continue. Continue yes. the work. Yeah, no. Well, I sit here and worry about no problems. Botox bills. Listen, Ronnie, I'm soft right now. It's okay. So, uh, I'm so soft right now. So Katie's like, I'm I need soft. consistency. And Lala's like, oh, really? Because you weren't best friends with Joe. You weren't best friends. You you weren't best friends to Raquel. And we're still holding on real tight to that. And at some point, you got to let it go. And if you want to hold on to it, that's on you. And I wish you the best. And I hope all is good with you. Hold on. Let me remind you how tall my nails are right now. Hold on. I'm good with you. <laughs> Just note that I am soft, though. I'm um... <laughs> This is my soft. This is soft, Lala. This is so back to me, bet. It's time for a commercial. It's time for a Crappens commercial. Introducing the new Blink Mini 2, the tiny but mighty plug-in smart security camera. Mini 2 works inside or outside with a Blink weather-resistant power adapter, starting at just $49.98. New features include HD night view in color with a built-in spotlight and a wider field of view. Stay connected with two-way audio and crisp HD video. Plug in Mini 2 just about anywhere around your home for the ultimate peace of mind. Shop Mini 2 at Amazon.com slash Blink. Welding instructor Alex DeClaire knows firsthand how VR training platforms like ForgeFX can help meet the demand for skilled workers. Anywhere you go look, there's going to be a shortage of welders. VR training can help welding students learn the skills they need to begin and advance in their career. The beauty of virtual reality is it simulates that exact muscle memory that they need. Explore more stories like Alex's at meta.com slash metaverse impact. Hello, snack lovers. Curb your cravings with my mochi ice cream. Imagine a scoop of rich, creamy, premium ice cream in your favorite flavor. Now imagine that scoop wrapped up in the sweetest, softest dough known to mankind. That's my mochi ice cream. Sweet, chewy, cool, and creamy, all in one bite. It's quite possibly the most joyfully chill sensation you've ever had in your life. My Mochi Ice Cream comes in tons of fabulous flavors like strawberry, mango, cookies and cream, and double chocolate. Each box of My Mochi Ice Cream has six perfectly portioned mochis that are about 80 calories each, and it's also gluten-free. You can find My Mochi at Target or visit MyMochi.com to find a grocery store near you. That's M-Y-M-O-C-H-I dot com. Discover the joyfully chill sensation of My Mochi Ice Cream today. Back to Sky Bar, this lady walks up to the Toms and their party, and she's like, Hi guys! How are you? Welcome to Singles LA. So everyone's single here, right? And Kyle's like, I'll be single for tonight, girl! It's like, okay, whatever, weirdo. So this is why we have a system. Green is for single, yellow is for your open, and if you're a wingman, you get a red one, and you get a blue one if you shouldn't really even be here in the first place. So that one's for you, Kyle! Blue for you! And they all choose green. <laughs> And uh, wow, Kyle. Uh, wow. I'm not dating you, but wow, Kyle. Wow. <laughs> so now they start the mingling. And Kyle, who's Kyle? Kyle, Kyle Schwartz. Kyle Chan. Kyle oh, Chan. Kyle. <laughs> I just literally just said his name. Kyle. Shifting Kyle. Kyle. Saying, um, Schwartz, you need to not always be with Joe, okay? Like, how are you supposed to find a girl, girl? And I'm just um, a bro right now giving you bro -y advice. <laughs> And Sorry, uh, the, the girl tells there. Sandoval, um, oh my God, like you're like wearing um, 
a girl necklace right now. Like, I really like when men wear women's jewelry, like, like maybe pearls or like Harry Styles type things. Like, that's so, I love watching middle-aged men emulate like teenage superstar idols. It's really <laughs> Yeah, man. I wear like a lot of women's stuff actually. Like I'm like cool with like a necklace or like I'll wear like sometimes like a woman's top or like a woman's best friend. Like I'm really good at putting myself in that. So this other girl is telling Schwartz, can I have your hat? Put it, put your hat on my head. <laughs> put it on my head. I dare you. I dare you to give up your hat for a minute. He's like, oh, okay, but can I have that back later? Only because it's a sentimental hat. Oh. And then, she, and then she's like, he's like, you know what? Yeah, you can keep it. You can keep it. I have like 70 more of them. Oh. Yeah, well, prove that you're, prove that you're like a hat giver and make out with me. <laughs> she like goes in for one of those makeouts where she starts like licking the outside of his face. Yeah. Like you just see her, like, are you putting your fist inside his mouth? What are you doing? Like she's putting her like, <laughs> you never Ooh. kissed anyone like me before because I'm wearing a hat. <laughs> Uh, and so Joe walks. Joe walks up. It's like, what intonation? Okay, you know what? I'm heading out. Bye. And she says, um, "Well, I was under the impression that a there'd be hot dogs here <laughs> or Olive Garden. <laughs> there were neither. And instead, like I thought we were going to be there to support Sandoval. And then we got there, and he was like, Schwartz was like interested in other women. So like, what am I? Chopped liver? Oh, is there chopped liver available? I will have that. I do enjoy a chopped liver. Mm -hmm. I, is that me? If I'm chopped liver, can, is it okay if I eat myself right now? Well, <sighs> Random question. Is unchopped liver like good and chopped liver is bad? Because no one really ever says, what am I, liver? <laughs> liver is probably actually delicious. Why am I craving liver right now? It's fucking crazy. Does pate count? Because I'm into that too. Okay. <laughs> anyway. So Schwartz is like, maybe it's not realistic to be so close as Joe and I are and still go out and then hang with other women and then have sex with other people. I don't know. I'm just wondering if she's a little deeper into this than me. Really? I wonder why that would be, Schwartz. I wonder where she gets the impression that you're together. This is crazy. I have yeah. no idea. Could it be that you told her you're together and you just don't want everyone else to know because you don't want Katie to fucking attack her so you're going to live this life publicly? like you're not together when really you are together because you know that's what he fucking did exactly and so then joe says she says you know i know the truth and the truth is that we are still hooking up and we said i love you to each other and it bothers me that he doesn't want to share this relationship with his friends and i'm tired of feeling I'm tired of feeling like a secret and like uh, we had known obviously that they had had sex but uh but the way she says it this way makes it sound like they are kind of like currently and actively hooking up, which is what we suspected, but we didn't know. And like, that's just like fucked up. Like, like, of course, like, J of course, Schwartz is just one of these guys that does that. Like, again, such fuckboy activity. And we saw it. We're seeing this on Summer House Martha's Vineyard, too, with Alex, where he's like, he's like, oh, I don't tell anyone. I'm a private person. That is the fuckboy thing that you want to, like, have like a code of privacy and secrecy. So that way you can basically have multiple girls at the same time but i think his i think schwartz is worse than the fuck boys we normally see because he really does shroud it in this like oh well i just want to be single like i'm being honest with you but i love you i'm gonna look deeply into your eyes and tell you i can't live without you and live with you but I can't be in a relationship. But the reason I can't be in a relationship is because I was so hurt by my monster of an ex that I'm yeah. traumatized. You just have to give me time because with oh, time, then I will be ready for a relationship. But right now, let's just know that I love you and we'll just keep this on the down line. Maybe someday I won't be traumatized. And then I told you I wasn't in a relationship. No, you like literally are sitting there making her think that she's on a waiting list for yeah. when you are ready. Like, you're not ready for a relationship now, but when you are ready, it's going to be her because you're already together. Not, and they have oh, I chemistry. told you the whole time, and I've been leading you on this whole time, and it's never going to be us. This guy is just such a prick, man. He's such a fucking yeah. asshole, and he's the worst because he's so tricky about it, and people still fall for his bullshit. It makes me... It makes me mad. And they do have good chemistry, which is kind of like, it's sad. It's sad that, like... You, this is this could actually be a a, a nice relationship um and he can have good like, chemistry with everybody though because he's like that he's like a he's a he's a vampire where he finds the energy and he matches that energy in the room so that the people and the the people the energy he's matching like him because they're like oh it's someone like me you know 
but better to be a vampire to Joe and like have like like they kind of like fun kooky vamp like he could get kooky energy as opposed to like like someone like Katie he was just miserable with Katie and he never was really into Katie. they had they do have like a chemistry that we saw last week like they have a chemistry but um it's just a shame that his own damage gets in the way of him being able to actually have like a productive relationship not that everyone needs a productive relationship but you sort of just see it there and you're like oh you're fucking this all up so now it's time to go to paintball he's a horrible fucking human being <laughs> i just needed yes. to sum it up that way because yes yeah okay I'm, i feel better <laughs> Um, an awful fucking man and you know what i'm glad she did that to your hair and i'll bet she is too because i think she knew what you were fucking up to and that's why she fucked you up she's literally like taking a baseball bat and hitting you in the knees for you to go out and date other people so have fun with that yeah she's at the carrie underwood of of the scene and carrie the underwood. hair is the, the fair the hair is the car that she's like so i took a louis logo with oh. both hands i thought you meant tanya harding and I was like, that's Tanya Harding, not Carrie Underwood. But no, you really met Carrie Underwood. And I, Carrie I'm Underwood. I'm a something car in my jeans and breaking your windshield. Carrie Underwood has a very specific niche of um, car songs. Either like, go beat up the car before he cheats or Jesus take the wheel <laughs> because it's too hard for me. Country song, country artists love singing about cars and trucks. They do. And Jesus, like veiled it's like huge. Jesus songs, but mostly cars. They love cars and trucks. They do. Yeah. So now we go over to paintball. So Sandoval shows up with Billy Lee and Kyle Chan. Kyle Chan is like, I can't believe I get to be in like three scenes this episode. And now I get to dress up in paintball uniform. I'm just one of the guys now. And, and you so know that Billy Lee is like, oh my God. She showed up. She's like, oh my God, here's what I think about paintball. Listen, I had a whole set about paintball one time. Like, paintball, am I right? <laughs> if I'm going to get splooched all over, is it going to be pain? I mean, God, this is my life now. Am I right, guys? <laughs> and did like a whole thing that just gets cut every time she comes <laughs> on screen. Are you going to invite tea? Are you going to invite tea to paintball? My, my girl, tea. <laughs> oh my God. You know what tea is? She's a vibe. Tea. She's a vibe. She's a vibe. We should have tea, tea here. Hmm. see. Um, so everyone's there, James and Ali Bali, Israel, who's like a, he's sort of been on the fringes, but he is there. We've, we're, he's finally getting a Chiron these days. He's been around for like two years, but now he's getting a Chiron. Lala and Lala's like, oh my God, short seats. When did you do that to your hair? And he's like, oh, I woke up like this. Oh yeah. Was it to hide the grace? Yeah. Because I thought maybe you got sick of dying at the wrong ground. So you're like, fuck it, I'm going bleach, blonde hair. High five, Ali Valley. High five, Ali. Ali. Ali Valley. Oh, uh, and James is like, I'm the only one who realized Schwartz is trying to hide it because he's getting old. I mean, his hair kind of changes every five seconds. <laughs> I love James just, the years keep going on and he still age James because no matter how old he is, they'll always be older than him, you know? Yeah. I just need to play you this section that happened on the show last night that is just the most Sheena of all Sheena sections. Here we go. What's up, Sheena? Hi. How's it going? Good, how are you? Chilling. <laughs> well, I know, laugh. I laughed. But just like, how are you? Hey, Sheena, I... how are you? Good, <laughs> how are you? I cracked up. That is just so, that's like so Sheena. Like, cause look, this is her from like a few seasons ago. Hey girl. Hey, how are you? Okay. How are you? Corner. <laughs> She's like, how do you yell corner when you're in the open? <laughs> um, she doesn't know what to do with the paint. Actually, this would probably be her favorite activity because she just keeps going around all those obstacles going, corner, corner, I'm down, I've been shot, corner. Cool. So they're doing one of those like wacky, it's like wacky day, paintballing. Um, and another, another sign that the producers knew that they were fucked for this season. They're going to paintball and top golf in one episode. That's uh -huh. a lot. Yeah. A lot of balls. <laughs> and the game place at the beach. This is three adult game places they've gone to in one episode. Yes. But thankfully they kept their silly editing to a minimum. It was not like, you know, in seasons past or if it would have been Potomac, um, it would have been like a da, 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 funny wacky titles as like an introducing Brock as so-and-so and Sandoval as so-and-so and, -so and da, da, da. they luckily like kept it minimal. 
So they have to like, they go through orientation where the guy's like, yeah, man, make sure you keep your masks on because this can cause blindness or facial re reconstruction or you can knock a tooth out. You basically be kicked off Bravo, so be careful. It's like, that's like, I mean, no one wants any of those things to happen, but it's like, th those are really high stakes if you're on better pump rolls. <laughs> Super. Check. Mr. Tan, what the hell are we doing here? Corner. No. <laughs> so, uh, you in Corner Girl. Corner. You in Danger Girl. Danger Girl. I'm, a, I'm not going to be playing paint balls because I'm in soft right now. So, can we play cotton balls? I'm having a soft moment. So, unless one of those is filled with stranger sperm and being shot right up my badge hole, I'm done with this game. <laughs> So I'm um, talking like that. My vaginal. All right, it's just time for softer. Me to get... It's soft. Be soft. It's soft phase. Soft phase. Lala. Um. So uh, there. The boys go off to play paintball. And like, guys, listen to me for a second. As the owner of a, his own proprietary paintball set, I want to let you guys know: do not get in groups. Spread the fuck out. Okay. It's the same. Same strategy as talking to girls. Spread the fuck out and then swarm, swarm, swarm. <laughs> so then Lala is talking to Sheener while everybody paintballs. And she's like, it's such a weird group today. It's like 12 year olds here. It's like one of them is 23 and said, said she met Sandoval when they go out together or something. <laughs> and Sheena goes, what's so weird about that? I hang out with Tori and she's 24. <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah it precisely so she was like you know what like um they're talking about how uh lala's talking about how she got into a little spat with with katie the other night and she was like yeah she got like really upset with lala for like going to lunch with joe and like not telling her i'm like yes i mean like i just got like a hot dog it's just a hot dog like no big deal right and now it's like oh yeah like i feel like really bad for joe like i manifested like her being a boss someday but she only wound up being a hair boss and like i feel bad that that manifestation went that way <laughs> and um she's like yeah well we grabbed a hot dog <laughs> it's gonna make me laugh every single time i grabbed the hot dog with joe <laughs> and so i sat down and i was like yeah let me manifest a hot dog <laughs> And my mom was like, yeah, well, look, Joe's a little hard to follow. She's all over the place. And I don't want to put her on the spot and overwhelm her. But talking to Katie, it's like, she's like, she gets really upset. And like, Katie, I'm like, Katie, I was like, she, she said, I would like loyalty and consistency. Okay. And loyalty. I mean, that's coming from a girl who just fucked her friend's ex friend. No, her ex's best friend. What kind of loyalty is that? You know, I know Katie's unhappy and like, you know, like it's like, you know, I've tried to baby her, but like, I will not be on the receiving ends of Katie going crazy. So uh, now it's another day and now we're at Schwartz's apartment where Joe naturally is in the kitchen making bird sounds for the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Just tweet, in there. Tweet, 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 tweet. Butters is like, you think I was going to help you so address Cinderella? <laughs> did, did you? <laughs> Butters, I'm not really a bird. I'm a little sorry. You're going to have to do your own chores today. Whoops, just spilled rice all over the floor. You're going to have to clean it up. <laughs> just kidding. I'm not an evil stepmother. I'm a bird. I'm a bird. Butters, who am I? Who am I, Butter? Am I a bird or am I Cinderella? <laughs> I don't know. They are boss. Whoop. I'm Stop trying boss, to eat butter. me. I'm not actual Butter. Woof, woof. <sighs> so Schwartz enters and he's like, oh, man. Well, what happened the other night? I'm confused. Am I sending you mixed signals? Because I really would love to to be in a long-term relationship with you, but I want to be single, single, yeah, but I, I want to have a relationship. Sure, I just want to make sure I'm not sending mixed signals because I don't want us like standing up on the altar and I'm about to say I do. And then you're confused about it. Like, huh, are we dating? Like, no, we're not dating. We're just getting married. Dating really. Just, you know, we're just here because I like suits and tuxes and I wanted to get married again. Not to you necessarily, but you're here. So we're getting married. I'm just married I'm to like the idea. You. Of us being friends. So, uh, your mom's he, paying for this, right? Okay. This is what a fucker Schwartz is. He says, Am I sending you mixed signals? And then he says, Because I know we have such a good time together and we have undeniable chemistry. That being said, 
I don't want to be in a relationship at all. I want to date other people. That is the definition of a mixed signal right there. Oh, oh of course. we have such good chemistry. God. It's undeniable. Well, I would never deny what chemistry we have. God, I can't wait to date other people. This is so hard. This is just unbearable. Okay. But I mean, I want to date other people and I am dating other people because I get numbers. I hook up with so many people. Oh my God. I'm just hooking up so much, but I, I, I guess I can't date anybody. I can't date them, but I can hook up because I'm still a stud. Oh God. Who are you kidding? Your middle-aged crisis is hurting me. Okay. Yeah. So Joe is like, um, can you imagine how I feel after being around you for the past year and a half? We have been there for each other. We have held each other up while we cried. We talked about someday going to an oversized hot dog and having lunch together. Yeah, and guess but, who I did that with? But, Lala. But, 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 shut the fuck up. Are you embarrassed by me? No, I'm not embarrassed, Joseph. No, come on. People are saying that behind closed doors, that you're saying that, that in secret that we're dating. And she's like, yeah, because you're, she didn't say this, but you are secretly dating. What you are, are you talking about? You've been hooking up with this girl forever and it was a secret you were totally lying about. You're hooking up so with her. Frustrating. You're hooking up with her regularly and you're uh, going together on little swan boats around a lake um, and you're playing adult games. So, yeah, that's secretly dating. And you live with her. Yeah. And also, you, it's like, <laughs> come on. Man. And you guys have like flirty banter and like you guys have chemistry. So he's like, so oh, maybe props we should to hang her out as much. for just being so honest. Yeah. By the way, also, because she's like, okay, so shut the fuck up with this, you know, are you embarrassed by me or what? And then she's like, so I guess maybe we need to not hang out as much. And he goes, uh, no, she, he says, maybe we need to not hang out as much. And she says, or at all. And he's like, whoa, to hear her say that is just so gut wrenching because we just have all this fantastic, we've had this fantastic voyage full of compassion and support and maybe even love. What a tragedy it would be to never hang out with each other again. <laughs> Sir, well, you can't, first of all, keep Coolio out of it with the fantastic voyage. Second of all, if you don't want, if you want to like keep her in your life, then you also have to respect her. And like, you guys, like, she, you're either going to be in a relationship with her or not, but you're not going to be friends because she wants more than that. And uh, he's like, she, she's like, sorry, he is like, well, maybe sometimes it is mixed signals because we have such a fucking good time together. I just want to have fun. She's like, yeah, we got it. We got it. We got it. She's like, I just don't want to send mixed signals. I can't. Listen, you addressing the mixed signals does not mean that the mixed signals go away. Like you're not getting any sort of brownie points for acknowledging that there are mixed signals because you are continuing to send them. Because you keep sending them. You're still the broken rodeo. There's still the broken rodeo. You're still the broken radio. You know what I mean? At some point, just turn yourself off. Like, stop playing in my ears and then saying, sorry, I'm, bl I'm blowing fuzz into your ears. Okay. It's a mixed signal. Stop putting out mixed signals. It's annoying. He's like, but I love you, but I don't love you, but I like you, but I love you though, but I don't love you, but I don't want to date you. I want to marry you, but I don't want to marry you. I just want to be with you. Don't, please don't have my children. Oh my God. I can't wait. What are we going to name our babies? Oh, it's so confusing. So she's like, would you say that we have a weird connection? Because everyone else sees it, except for Katie. Gross. It's so easy. Like, us together, we'd be, like, disgustingly together and, like, old and laughing and all those things. Don't you agree? Don't you? Can't you imagine us watching Wheel of Fortune when we're 75 years old going, burr, burr, I'll buy a devil or a hot dog. You know what I'm saying? I mean, who else are you going to sit there and watch Wheel of Fortune with that can make the sound of the wheel? <laughs> <laughs> and then we can be like, remember that time in our 50s when we actually went on Wheel of Fortune and then I attached my teeth to the wheel and went flung around into the audience? Oh, my God. <laughs> Ding! Wheel of Fortune! Where else are you going to hear that, Tom? Where? <laughs> Oh, uh, wheel of mixed signals more like, oh man. So he says, she's like, don't we have like this great, can't you imagine us like growing old together and just like laughing and having so much fun? And he's like, a hundred percent. It's like, see, don't, that's a mixed signal. And she's like, okay, but here's the thing. I have feelings for you. And he goes, yeah, same. And it's not that I'm denying it. And she goes, okay, but you don't have to explain. Well, don't give him that out because, yes, he does have to fucking explain. He does have to Because he's still doing it, like, right now. And she's like, and he's like, Joseph, don't cry. And she's like, look, I'm being honest with you. And he goes, I love when you're honest with me. Shut up. Shut the fuck up. Stop this patronizing thing. 
He's like, look, I don't want to pressure you. I'm just, I'm going to miss the, the laughter and the banter and the free Olive Garden. And, you know, this, something like this only comes around once in a while. This guy's such a piece of shit. And I think the real attraction to Joe is the fact that she triggers Katie. <laughs> and I think that's the yeah, only that's attraction to Joe. I think it turns him on to piss Katie off. They've still, you know, like we've said it a million times this season, they've got still got some weird relationship where they just like abusing each other where they don't have to live together anymore you know and some married couples we've seen it on multiple bravo shows and real life are just happier when they don't live together you know they mm -hmm. have their own life and they still fight all the time but somehow they're still happily married and i think that's kind of this couple and anybody else who's going to get involved in this couple is going to be collateral damage yeah so Joe's like, it's just really hard. I just want him to be happy, like massively. He's my favorite person in the world. And I don't care what he says about me, but that's the goddamn truth. I think the world of him, uh, which my response to that is, I think it's time to start meeting other people. <laughs> Because yeah, I think pool. you need to be you need to worry about yourself being happy because this is fucking crazy. Now, on the other side of that coin, now normally this is the point where I'm like, have some self respect and get the fuck out of here. But I can but totally I see what she's going through with this because he is really doing a number on her, and we see it. And this is him knowing he's on TV and knowing how to play his cards right, and he still looks like this much of a fuckwit with it. Like he's, yeah, I, if I he's feel doing this on TV, just imagine what he's like behind closed doors with her. I know that he crawls into her bed and they stare into each other's eyes and finger comb each other's hair, and then and uh, and then he says, "I'm not ready yet," just to like cover his bases. But then he probably tell like sells fantasies of like, yeah, imagine when we're gonna be like fifty and like going on cruises together it's like yeah it'll be hilarious we'll be on like a cruise and like talking about the people like they probably like do all that stuff and then in public he's just like oh we're only friends i feel like generally bad for her and she walks out of the apartment she's crying she's like i want to call my dad and she's he, he's like oh joseph joseph it's like no 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 like you don't get to do the cutesy nickname right now she is crying because of your inability to be a mature human being Matursk. Yeah. And, you know, it doesn't mean you can't fuck around and be single and be honest with people, but you're not being honest. Like, yeah. you can say you're being honest all you want to, but your actions also matter and you're not acting like that. I know that he's making I, her believe like, oh, we have absolutely. something for the future just when I'm ready. Just wait for me to be and, ready. It's like, oh, my God, you're never going to be ready. You're like what you're like buying claim jumper mac and cheese from the grocery store. It's never ready. Like, how long does that need to be microwave? Just fucking mac and cheese. At some point, I'm just going to eat a potato. <laughs> Know, you know so funny i was gonna mention stofers but um uh no he he is like look he's in, he's entitled to saying like hey i just got out of this 10 year 12 year relationship whatever it was and i want to be single and i want to have fun and i want to hook up with people and i want to date around yada 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 i will not take that away from him but what i hate is when when people are in that space and yet they kind of sell a bill of goods to someone who kind of has like hearts in their eyes and they know they have hearts in their eyes and they indulge it because they get off on it. It's just like not fair. It's not fair to, to, to those people. And I just feel, I feel really bad for Joe. And I think that, that Schwartz, like this whole bullshit of being like the sweet, nice guy when he's just as like self-interested and self-obsessed as Sandoval or really so many other pigs, um, it's like, it's hard to watch. Yeah, I, mean, I think I love that's why he stays so close with Sandoval because, you know, he can say whatever he wants, but ultimately he gets to blame. Sand Sandoval gets to shoulder all the blame for everything while Tom gets off scot free in every single thing. It's like, oh, the restaurant. Oh, gosh, maybe the restaurant's not doing well, but, you know, it's because of Sandoval. And also, Tom never shows up and Tom never does anything. I'm the one who does everything. Well, we've watched this show for years and know how much you work. So, yeah. Like, unless that suddenly completely changed, you know, and I, that obviously that doesn't mean Sandoval is not a piece of shit. It's just the guy, Sandoval, at least we know what a piece of shit he is now, you know, and Schwartz, Absolutely. I think, just always flies under the radar. And that's that's the real killer, you know, it is. So anyway, thank you, everyone, for being here on another humongous recap of Vanderpump Rules. Um, for some reason, I thought this was only going to be an hour and look at us now. So. Thanks everyone for being here. There's just always so much to talk about. Well, we sell more shows. We got the battle. We got summer house coming up later this week and yeah, Vanderpump Villa next week. 
See you there. It's the Thanks, event, everyone. The event of the spring. The event. Uh, bye, everyone. Bye. Watch what crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Allison King. Ashley Savoni. She don't take no baloney. Strolling the park with Caitlin Clark. She's not just a Sheila. She's a Daniela. Itchels. Aaron McNicholas. She don't miss no trickleus. She's never scary. It's the Green Fairy. Jamie. She has no less namey. Hava Nagila Weber. Know your worth with Jason Kurth. She's the wind beneath our Jennifer Wing. Sip some scotch with Jessica Trotch. She's always supplying. It's Kelly Ryan. Kristen the Piston Anderson. Let's give a kisserino to Lisa Lino. We want to hang with Liz Lang. Megan Berg. You can't have a burger with out the bird. The Bay Area Betches, Betches. And our super premium sponsors. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Can't have a meal without the Emily Sides. We forever love Ava. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. We got our wish, it's Jen Plish. She's not harsh, she's Jill Hirsch. She's a little bit loony. Junie, my favorite Murdo, Karen McMurdo. We love him madly, it's Kyle Pod Shadley. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender. The incredible edible Matthew sisters. Give him hell, Miss Noel. She's the queen bee, it's Sarah Lemke. Shannon, out of a cannon, Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kuchar. We love you guys. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watcher Crappens ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or you can listen ad-free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at wondery.com survey.